Instead of manually selecting ranges over and over again, which can lead to mistakes like selecting the wrong column or missing a few rows, you can just name your data so you get the same consistent result and it's much easier to read. So in this video, you'll learn all about named ranges from the essentials all the way to making a dynamic named range and how it compares versus an Excel table. Let's get into it. First up, let's go over a simple exercise so you know how to create named ranges. So let's suppose that we want to multiply the price by the quantity. So you might think of just doing this and then multiplying it by this side, but you might not always be aware of what the C3 is or the D3 is, especially for bigger ranges. Instead, the other way with named ranges is to select this one and up here on the top left, we're going to call this the price. Hit enter there. And then for this one, we're going to call it the quantity. Hit enter again. And now when you hover over these, you'll notice this one shows us the price and this other one shows us the quantity. So all we need to do for the revenue is the price multiplied by the quantity. Hit the tab key there and hit enter. You can see it does the same selection. So it selects these two, but the syntax now just says price by quantity, which is much more explanatory. Admittedly, that's not a very useful scenario, but now that you understand the syntax, we can move on to some more practical scenarios. Here, suppose we want to calculate the tax amount, so it would just be 10% of this price. For that, you might think of doing the price and multiplying that by the sales tax amount. And now we could just drag this down. But you'll notice when we do that, we start to get some errors. And that's because the whole sales tax over here is moving down on each new row we add. To fix this, you would typically need to use the dollar signs. So we can go back in here for this red part. We need to add dollar signs. But should you add the dollar sign in front of the C, in front of the 2, or both? That's where a lot of people get confused and a good workaround is using named ranges. So all we need to do is select the whole sales tax part and we'll call this the sales tax over here. Sales underscore tax. And I put that underscore there because you can't have spaces within this area. So I can't do that. Instead, a good workaround is an underscore. Hit enter there. And so now down over here, we're going to change this up a bit and say it's C4 multiplied by the sales tax. Hit the tab key there and hit enter. Now, if I drag this down all the way to the bottom, you notice we don't have any errors. When I click on this one, it's still selecting the sales tax and it hasn't moved down. Even better, if I change this to say 12%, it updates dynamically. So that sales tax number is updating because it's referencing that C2 cell. At this point, you might be wondering why not just use a table instead of a named range. And that's something we're going to cover later in the video. For now, let's go over a scenario which involves adding a name range inside of a bigger formula. So over here, you can see that we have some managers, their revenue, and we want to find out if they deserve a bonus. And that's based on this bonus threshold of 50,000. So for a conditional statement like this, it makes sense to use an if. Here, the logical test is that the revenue has to be greater than the bonus threshold. So what we'll first do is name this the bonus. Hit enter there. And so now I'm going to go over here and say equals. And if statement, the logical test is, is that this revenue here has to be greater than the bonus threshold that we just named over here. And if it's true, we're going to say bonus in quotations there. And if it's no tr not true, then we want to put not bonus or no bonus. Close those quotations and close that parenthesis and hit enter. Now I can just double click over here to the side. This one doesn't hit the 50k threshold, so he doesn't deserve a bonus. And that's what it says right here. I have to admit that the way we've been creating named ranges so far is a bit lazy. And here's the more official way to do it. We would need to go over to the formulas area. And from here, we can click on define a name. That's kind of the more official way to do this, where you'll notice that we can type in the name. We can choose the scope, which is basically where do you want it to be affected in? So is it in the entire workbook or is it in a specific sheet, like only the revenue sheet? Then down here in the comments, maybe you can add who made this. So who's the author of this one? And the first two part is where we would add the actual cell name. If we press escape, we can just get out of that. And in this example, you'll notice that I've named this the bonus, the bonus threshold. I just called bonus, which probably isn't a great name. So if you want to make any changes to that, you can go over to formulas again. 
and choose the name manager. This is where you'll see all of the different named ranges you currently have. So the bonus one, where it refers to, what the actual current value is, and the scope. So here we can click on edit, and instead of just naming it the bonus, I'm just gonna put bonus underscore threshold, as that's probably a much better name that's more descriptive. Now I can press on close, and you'll notice in here it's been updated automatically to the bonus threshold. As you add more and more names, you might sometimes forget them, and an easy way to find out what the current ones are is just by going to this drop down and choosing from here. Alternatively, if you want to do some more cleanups and things like that, you can go to the name manager and delete or add a new one, or even filter over here to the side. So far, we've only seen named ranges for one specific cell, but we can also do that for an entire group of cells too. Before we do that, with the help of HubSpot, I've created a 50 Excel Hacks guided template to boost your Excel productivity. By clicking the link in the description, you can access this resource completely for free. It includes 10 of my personal favorite Excel hacks and a further 40 to cover even more scenarios. The download includes instructions on how to use them and some sample data to practice. HubSpot even provides some short demo videos for each one. Personally, I find this Excel template most useful to refresh my memory on some of the key hacks as I can easily practice them with the sample data. So I recommend visiting the link in the description below to download this completely free 50 Excel hacks guided template from HubSpot to level up your Excel game. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Suppose over here we want to name more than just one cell. So for instance, this whole Mexico area, I want to call it Mexico. Same with the US, Canada, etc. Let me show you a cool shortcut to do that, which is just pressing Ctrl A for selecting that whole area. And then we're gonna go over to formulas and click on create from selection. We can do a few different things here. Top row is basically go by Mexico, USA and Canada and name those. Or we can also do left column. So Bill, we'll see all of Bill's revenue. Kennedy, same thing, etc. We'll just press on OK with these two. Now if I go over here to the side and I just look up Bill and hit the tab key, you'll notice we get these three values. If I just hit enter, we can see them over to the side. Obviously, they have slightly different formatting, but the numbers are exactly the same. Same thing over from the top. If I choose Mexico over here, you'll see it selects this entire range, and we can just hit enter. Now that we have everything named, we can do a lot of quick analysis. For instance, in here, I can say equals sum of all of Mexico revenue. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. Same thing goes if I want the maximum of the Mexico revenue and hit enter there. Overall, using this method, you're much less likely to select the wrong area, like maybe forgetting to add a row at the very bottom because you didn't see it. Also, if you forget what the exact name is, maybe you added Mexico without a capital M, then what you can do is just press the F3 key. That's a shortcut to see all of the different names that you currently have available. So let's suppose that we actually wanted to get Canada in here. I could just select that press on OK and it adds it within this whole formula part and hit enter. If you're feeling creative, you probably thought of adding a named range within a named range, so a nested one. Let me show you what that would look like. Let's suppose we go over to define name and we can call this the total revenue. So total underscore revenue and what I'm going to refer to over here is going to be equals to the sum and we can put the Mexico comma the USA one, comma, and the Canada. Close up parenthesis and hit OK. Now we can just go for the total revenue and you can see it's selecting all three at the same time. We can just hit enter to see that full number. The main problem with the current named ranges we've seen so far is that they don't update with any new numbers we add to the list. For instance, suppose over here I just go for the sum of all of Canada, hit enter there, we have this figure, but if I add a new value down on the bottom, let's say I just add 10,000 there, you'll notice that this one doesn't update to account for it too. To make this such that it updates automatically, there is a workaround, but it's not that easy. Let me show you over here. First, what we need to do is select the first part. So in our case, it's E3. Then we want to add a colon here, delete the second E3 part, which is where we'll make the dynamic part. 
with the index function first. Here as the array, we want to make sure we select all the way to the bottom and beyond. Basically, we want to account for any new parts that get added. Let's suppose I'm happy to go all the way to row number 30. Then we'll put a comma in here and as the row num, we're going to use the counter function. This is basically going to count which one is our very last row that actually has data in it. So we'll select that same area, which is E3 to E30. Make sure it's got the exact same length here. Close this parenthesis and now close it again for the index and hit enter. You'll notice here that it's accounting for that 1000 at the bottom. If I add any new values here, let's say I put 01, it gets accounted for down below as well. So that's exactly what we want. But now we need to add this inside of a named range. So I'm just going to copy that whole formula part and I'm going to go over to the find name and add it over here. So Canada, let me put underscore dynamic for this one. And as the refers to part, I'm just going to paste that whole area. Press on OK now. Let me delete this whole part and delete this value here on the bottom too. So I can say the sum of the Canada dynamic. That's the one we're looking for. We can close up parenthesis and hit enter. And now if I add a new value in here, it does update. Let me make it bigger so it's more clear. You can see there that it makes a difference. I realized I went over that formula quite quickly. So let me explain it a bit more step by step. Over here, this first E3 part is the one that selects where to start from. So it's starting at that E3. And then this part right here is going to tell us all the way to where we should go. That first index is basically telling us what's the very last cell that we have. And the counter here is counting how many non-empty ones we have. So whenever we add a new cell value, that counter is going to account for it. The index is going to find out what the actual value is. And then the E3 makes sure we take it all the way from the top to the bottom. Awesome. While this workaround does work, I think that it can be quite tedious to do over and over again. So it's not that realistic. But if you want a similar effect, you can just use tables instead. Let me show you what I mean over here. I can just convert all of this by pressing Ctrl T to convert it into a table. Here we go. And now if I wanted to do that same thing, so the sum of the Mexico, US and Canada, I could just select all of these. And you'll notice it says table one, all Mexico. So that's already pretty explanatory. Then I would select the second one. So that's USA. And then the third one would be Canada. Of course, it's not as clean as the name ranges, but it's still not bad. I can also just do some, select all of this part right here. And you'll notice that this time it says Mexico, colon, and Canada. That basically means from here all the way to Canada. Now we can just take the sum of the whole Canada area like we did below. And you'll see that it still has that name on the bottom. Hit enter, we have the same value. But what's nice is that if I add anything new in here, Let's say I add a big value like that. You'll notice the formatting gets accounted for and the formula accounts for it too, all the way to that very last cell. So we don't need to actually add any formulas or anything to account for new values and make it dynamic. Overall, I think the named ranges work very well for a single value like we've seen earlier with the sales tags or with the bonus threshold. But when it comes to multiple values, probably a table works better. Tables also have a lot of other features like being able to add filters, calculations and more which you can learn by watching this video over here or you can also check out all our courses over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.